Hello everyone, before we start today's video, if you could all do me a solid and lightly tap the like button, perhaps share the video about and leave a comment. If you are not subscribed, subscribe as well. It would greatly help this channel. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, welcome back to another edition of Where Are They Now? Today I'd like to talk about somebody I have covered only once before. The video in question falls within the Content Constable series. Unfortunately, it is one of two videos that ultimately led to that series' demise, because I took two years to finally bother to make it owing to burnout. And when I finally had bothered to make the video, two others had done sublime jobs at covering this individual, so I doubt I could add anything new to the discussion. During that video, I am quite clearly disdainful of somebody I was a fan of, and I really was. In fact, I found his brother through him, not the other way around. His shorter format gaming videos were to me quite funny, but as time went by and he refused to change, he showed himself to be petty, bitter, pouty, aggressive, but lacking in any discernible conviction to see something through to a conclusion where he would be on top. A great demonstration of that would be when he went into boxing, and he could have been the one person at the start that would have stopped another person who we all loathe to no end from going down the path they are on, where they are still a winner for fighting majority retired non-boxers. I am of course speaking about Deji, and I am not going to play my Content Constable video in this video. Instead, I want to talk about what happened after to lead us up to where he is now, because he's had quite an interesting couple years, and those couple years are a testament to a persistence, a lack of quit, an unironic quit to an extent because he hasn't won everything, but he did eventually come out on top. So I'm going to start after his loss to Jake Paul, because Deji could have beaten him. Everyone agrees he could have won, but something working against him was his own stamina, or lack thereof. So Deji took the licks and took on another person. In fact, since Jake Paul, he has had four fights. Three of them against other creators, the fourth against a goat, who does not care anymore about his legacy, but about money. Then again, He's always cared about money. After this loss to Jake Paul, Deji went on the Impulsive podcast. He also did some diss tracks. Turns out the relationship between himself and his brother was not doing so well. So Deji was deciding it's good business to now link up with all the people in the world that do not like my brother. Because to him, his brother picked his friends over Deji. JJ had responded on multiple occasions trying to show him the light, placate him, try and calm him down. But it wasn't happening. They couldn't reach an accord. Diss tracks were there. This continued until a renowned Christmas incident. This incident led to a number of response videos between Deji and KSI. I wasn't sure who was telling the truth, so I decided not to cover it then. There was audio leaked of an argument in the house. Threats were made. Property claimed to be threatened to be destroyed. It eventually led to JJ getting roasted I believe during a Sidemen Sunday roast video where somebody had said, Ah, uh, KSI. Given what happened last Christmas, this might be the only roast you're invited to this year. As a result of all of this, Deji lost thousands of subscribers. It wasn't helped because he kept on uploading more videos talking about the situation. And in January 2019, he eventually uploaded an apology to JJ and then deleted the unforgivable diss track, which then in turn ended all of this drama. Didn't last long though, five months later, um, the diss track was made public again, and um, he went on to explain later that he suffered from physical abuse from his brother and had unalived thoughts as a result of the latest situation, along with calling out JJ for forgetting their mother's birthday. This in turn continued further into the month and into June when JJ finally decided to respond to it. In that video, he showed proof of Deji's manipulation and hypocrisy. KSI also apologised to his brother, because the videos that Deji was referring to where Deji got hurt, even with the context proving that it was all done as part of a video and not intended to be used as abuse, he apologised for taking it as far as he had in those videos. 
During all of this, both were losing subs, gaining subs, losing subs, depending on where the court of public opinion was swaying. In 2020, this issue was still going on. As far as the relationship goes between JJ and Deji, since 2021, they have been very close and have remained as such ever since. After that, we skip ahead to Vinny Hacker. Deji fought Vinny Hacker on the main card of the YouTuber vs TikTokers boxing event. This did not go very well, because many believed Deji had an advantage. Vidal Riley, his trainer, said that he hit harder than KSI. If he could land something solid, he would win. Vinny Hacker won via third round TKO. Vinny Hacker's profile was elevated after this fight because not only was he humble in response, but he went to check on Deji to make sure he was okay. Deji later went on to upload a video titled See You Soon, saying that he was going to take a break and work on himself. Three days later, KSI uploaded a video titled Deji. This video is important because sometimes you need to be told what KSI told him. It was very much tough love because Deji didn't come in trained and prepared. He looked like somebody who'd just come in from McDonald's, multiple McDonald's. Ill prepared so many McDonald's he might have needed to poop before he got in the ring. His stamina was not there. His punch resistance was non-existent. He clearly hadn't put any effort into training and it showed. But Deji wasn't willing to give up. This led to a number of memes in fact, many centering on him saying, I'm going to keep trying to do this because if the fans want to see this I'll do it, and the next would be an image of how many fights he's lost while continually claiming this. So next on his hit list was Alex Wasabi, somebody known for their diss tracks but also because they had had a fight with Fousey2 and beaten him up. It was quite funny, in the sense of someone punching a maypole that refuses to fall down. Which is an interesting point to make because... Deji, when he fought Alex Wasabi, claimed he was in the best shape of his life. He looked ready to go. He looked and seemed like he had prepared for this one. However, he lost again. This fight was interrupted briefly in the second round when a fan jumped in the ring, which did force it to halt briefly. There were accusations that Alex Wasabi had used illegal elbows to achieve the victory, but ultimately the result was that Deji yet again stopped. But this time, it was different. This was different because Deji had employed different tactics, and I'm not entirely sure who came up with this idea, but whoever it was, I hope you were fired for it. Deji didn't throw any punches. He seemed to rely on slipping and nothing more. He had the stamina this time, but really did he because he didn't throw any punches to use any of that stamina up, so it looked like a reasonably okay performance. Punch stats would tell you otherwise. Alex Wasabi cruised to victory because Deji did not do anything, really. His movement, yes yeah, sure, but it yet again was another loss, after which Deji had said he was going to retire. He also said that he'd do what his fans want him to do, so things were a bit up in the air I guess. While it is a good thing to lose on points, it's not a good thing to lose on points when you didn't actually throw anything. It was almost as boring to me as watching Vladimir Klitschko and Tyson Fury. It was, while a good win for Fury, incredibly dull. And the less said about the third judge that voted in favour of Deji, the better. It was not a good fight. Now before we get to his final two fights, there was something else that happened between that. In January of 2022, Deji announced that he had broken up with his girlfriend, due to controversies involving her saying racial remarks to a black person on an e-date show. Right, as for me, word, word too. And I'm getting tight right. right now because what you said was out of I'm pocket. Sorry. And you I'm call sorry me that you have a black skin color. It was not a roast. It what? was a roast, dude. You have no, but he's saying to me, he's saying, I don't need to hear that I'm black. I'm sorry you have a black skin color. I'm sorry. You know why? That fat ass, that, that fat low, low, ass nose low, 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 gotta go too. Fat ass nose? Wait, yeah. Fat ass nose? I mean, you're black. You're black. You're literally black. Where you gonna talk about fat ass nose? We can't. All right, all right. Whoa. Deji found that hard to watch, his brother also later conceding he took that personally, the comments that she had made. Now there were other conflicting bits of information. His ex did in fact put out a apology, but many did not take it as genuine or serious, and in response to that she removed herself from social media entirely. The relationship itself, I'd seen bits here and there over the years but I wasn't paying attention to it because they just did typical, you know, goofy Deji videos together. It all seemed quite amusing. There was nothing untoward, but again, I wasn't as invested in that. I was more interested in the boxing. I love boxing, and I really wanted Deji to win. And on three separate occasions, he didn't when he should have. That's not to say for a second, none of his opponents didn't deserve to win. They 100% did, 
because the version of Deji they fought was not the best version of him. Oh, and to quickly go back on the breakup aspect, there were some comments that perhaps it was a language barrier between English and non-English. I'm not entirely sure. I'm really not. But it happened. Let's go with that. It's the safest way forward before we then get to Deji's next foray into boxing. One that I'm very happy it turned out the way it did, but at the same time, Alex Wasabi had already done it. I'm of course speaking of the fight between Deji and Fusi on the undercard of KSI's Double Fighter Night. On DAZN, I believe, Fusi Tube and Deji met in the squared circle. Fusi looked amazing. There were some concerns. We'll get to those afterwards, maybe. Deji, though, looked ready. He looked like he was ready to go. And for three rounds, Deji was ready. You could tell he had put the time in this time. The tactics to find his range and make Fusi pay were very much on the agenda. Then again, just to insert the one little criticism, Fusi is a soft target, but you do have to start somewhere when you're rebuilding. One of the greatest cruiserweights of all time, Johnny Nelson, lost his first three professional fights. He went around the world to regain his honour and became one of the longest reigning cruiserweight champions in history. So that's not to say for a second Deji can't do the same. You have to rebuild at some point. In the third round, this happened. That's right, Deji had finally, and I will admit I was so happy when this happened, got the dub. And it was against, to be honest, Fusi who had put in a bit more effort than he had against Wasabi. He'd been downed a couple times, Fusi that is, but Deji didn't relent. This time Deji understood how to box properly, and it showed. This to an extent has brought about a renaissance in his career, in the sense that he is collaborating with the sidemen more than he's ever done before. He's treated with respect this time. He used to get mocked quite heavily. This time it seems to be well balanced, doing challenges together, humiliating each other for a laugh, having fun. And the chemistry between even those that really didn't like him that much is vastly more improved to what it was four years ago. Shortly after this, it was announced that Deji will be having another fight, an exhibition against Floyd Mayweather, which I will admit caught me off guard. Part of me had thought that perhaps the intention was to fight Fusi and have it in Dubai. Instead it was Deji. As far as the promotion for this went, not much was heard. Deji got a purse guarantee of $1.5 million to Floyd's 10, I believe. Floyd would have taken home close to 35 million. Tax isn't exactly a priority over there, so he would have gotten a substantial amount of money there. And the same for any pay-per-view money received by Deji, which is great news, a big payday for him. He deserved that. But the fight itself wasn't that good. Something of it came about that was quite good for Deji, but the rest of it not so much. In the sense that for six rounds, and this is something KSI himself agreed on, Floyd just beat his brother up. It was a complete mismatch. Floyd's skill set is too high. Now we know why Floyd does this now. It's embarrassing to an extent, but reality is Floyd can make tens of millions on exhibition fights and all he has to do is phone it in. So how does this benefit Deji? Deji gave Floyd a black eye, and I'm not gonna deny this. I love that. I love that a lot. There was some controversy just before the fight concerning Jake Paul, but thankfully that was dealt with. I think Jake Paul thinks he can have a fight with Floyd or a fight with JJ. I don't care who Jake Paul fights as long as he gets knocked out and stops embarrassing the sport of boxing by fighting retired mixed martial artists and claiming it's a boxing event. But for Deji, he can say he got in the ring with Floyd Mayweather and gave him a black eye. That also helps his career. And that's fantastic. I genuinely hope his career continues to go up. He finally got his play button a couple years back. That was great. I think he's got three now, but I think the other two were sent to him accidentally or he purchased them. I don't know. Either way, his career's gone back up again. And I'm genuinely happy in that respect. I'm glad he got a win, and if he does decide to box again, I hope he boxes people within that certain level that he is at the moment. So just above Fusi, work your way up. Don't be like former world champions who lose multiple fights at the top, win one fight on a comeback and go, I'm ready to go back into the world title mix. You're really not. Stop it. You know who you are.